Streets of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Special guest star, Michael Douglas. Also starring Richard Hatch. With guest stars in alphabetical order, Patty Duke Aston, Darlene Carr, Tina Chen, Jan Clayton, Susan Day, Norman Fell, Gary Frank, Paula Kelly, Jim McMullen, Doris Roberts, James Shigeta, Barry Sullivan, Dick Van Patten, Joseph Wiseman. Tonight's episode, The Thrill Killers, Part 1. Winston Stiles, please. Sorry, I'm late. Just wrapped up. How'd you make up? Boy, ruled it a justified shooting. You're in the clear? Yeah. Mr. Stiles, I remind you, you're still under oath. Be seated. Mr. Stiles, you've already testified that you were one of the four persons in the Dauber home the night he, his wife, and daughter were slain. Yes. And the other three were. Gareth Foster, uh, and them. Let the record show that the witness is identifying the defendants. And yet we have heard both Nick and Marie Tanninger testify that they were not present in the Dauber home that night, deny ever having seen them. <clears throat> yes, they lied. I didn't hear you. <clears throat> I said that they lied. They were there. Tell us again, Mr. Stiles. Why were they there? To kidnap Mr. Dauber. Again, sir? Why? Mr. Dauber was president of an oil company. And we had had demonstrations at his office back when we were in the social causes. Uh, he was picked at random as a symbol of the establishment. And who picked him? Nick did. Nick Tanninger did. All right, Mr. Stiles. You were going to kidnap Mr. Dauber for half a million dollars. What went wrong? What went wrong? Uh, what went wrong was we never expected Mr. Dauber to have the guts that he had. He just wasn't going to be intimidated by us. While Marie was tying up Mrs. Dauber, the old man jumped Nick and knocked his gun away. Nick yelled at Marie to shoot. She did. She just let go. And then Nick got his gun, and he killed the old lady. And he just kept firing. I couldn't believe what was happening. Then Nick turned to shoot the girl. Gareth saw what was happening, and tried to stop it by getting in the way. Uh, in a few seconds, they were all dead. Gareth, all of them were dead. Gareth Foster was killed accidentally? Yes. Yes, sir. But his body wasn't found in the home. No. No, uh, 
He was dumped later in an alley. See, Nick said we had to get Gareth out of the house, get rid of his body. That was the last time I saw Gareth. I remind the jury that according to Inspector Steve Keller's testimony, the body of Gareth Foster was found in an alley on 19th Street the following day. One last question, Mr. Stiles. Why was it necessary to kill Mrs. Dauber and the girl? Uh, that's what I asked Nick Plater myself. <clears throat> and the answer he gave me was no witnesses. Thank you. Mr. Stiles, Gareth Foster was uh, a good friend of yours, was he not? <coughs> And isn't it true that your motive in being a witness for the prosecution was to avenge the death of your good friend? No. No, that wasn't the point at all. Gareth and I had agreed to the kidnapping, but we never bargained for murder. And isn't it true that Gareth and you had a homosexual relationship? Objection! Isn't that why you invented this pack of lies? To avenge the death of your lover? I must object, Your Honor. Counsel has no right to characterize this testimony. It is for the jury to decide who's telling the truth here. And I further object to his again bringing up the homosexual relationship. That point has already been conceded. Both objections sustained. Do you have any more questions, Mr. Banchik? None, Your Honor. Then this court will stand in recess until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. All cautions to the jury will apply. <laughs> Court's adjourned. Defense attorney's rough. I'm not looking forward to another day of cross. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, Dan. You can handle it. Yeah, he put us through the ringer because we headed the investigation. We got Styles' confession. But you, well, you turned in a good, clean, heads-up collar. There's nothing he can challenge there. I'm a detective on that one arrest. What do I do if he hassles me on that? What are you talking about? Any cop can take Nick Tanninger one-on-one -on -one at night. Believe me, you deserve your shield, you know? Right. <laughs> time before those two hit the pavement again. Yeah. What about them? The Challenger family. Yeah. They're gonna be around. I don't think Styles doesn't know it. So, where did you finally tell those bozos at Berkeley? I didn't tell them anything yet, but uh, I'm thinking about it seriously. Not because of that shooting inquiry. No, not that. It's, it's just a teacher, huh? School teacher. Yeah. You belong in the classroom about as much as I belong in the ballet rooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, where did you park? In? I'm parked right out front, no parking zone. That figures. Can I drop you off downtown? Uh, Steve and I are having dinner at Minnelli's. Maybe see a movie. We thought you might like to join us since I'm paying for the meal. You don't know how lucky you are. Kills me to say no. But I'm going home to stroganoff, sour cream and noodles, silverware, real silverware, napkins. Ooh, Jeannie's home, isn't she? Mm-hmm, Jeannie's home, that's right. And so have a good time, fellas. Right. I'll see you in the morning. Okay. Good. You look a little more rested today, Mrs. Whalen. <laughs> Thank God I'm only a diabetic, not an alcoholic. <laughs> a boozer go crazy on a long dry life. <laughs> Mrs. Klein, you dropped your nose. Oh, thank you, dear. <sighs> Another day. They say we'll be through maybe three or four more days. I'm up to here with live shows. I missed the nose. I don't know what the hell's going on. I know he's a pro, and I just don't want him to think I got my detective shield out of a grab bag. No, and I wouldn't worry about it. That's just Mike. If he didn't like it, you'd know about it. What, do you got a police radio in this? Yeah, CBE, the works. Does Mike know about this car? No, I don't think so. Hey, maybe he'd like to borrow when this case wraps up. Does he like to fish? Does Mike like to fish? <laughs> the only thing he calls in handcuffs. See you tonight.
What do you think, babe? I think it can work. Come on. Yeah, I know, I know. You got the same offer last year and the year before. But this time... Oh, this time, he's really thinking about it. Well, I hope so. What? I mean it, Mike. Steve will make a dynamite teacher. Associate professor. That's what they're dangling in front of him now. And money. Good money. That's great. You want the best for Steve, don't you? No, of course I want the best for him, but... Well, he's too good on the streets to be putting chalk on a blackboard. Well, like I said, he'll make a fine teacher. He's already a fine cop. Well, what can I say? You want me to put out a contract on Berkeley? Hey, Mike. Why don't you offer Steve something that'll make him indebted to you? The old-time kings used to do that, you know, to solidify their kingdoms? No. They used to offer their daughters. I've already tried. Oh, you did, did you? And he said that if that was all the kingdom had to offer, he would settle for Des Moines. Oh, you... Careful now. <laughs> you now. think you're really funny, well, don't you? Get you get hurt now. You, you never even said you know how good can. the stroganoff was, you It ingrate. was the best. <laughs> oh, you got it pretty good, don't you? Of course you? I have. Then lighten up, huh? Stop worrying about Steve. Well, if I didn't worry about the two of you, my little girl and my partner, I'd have nothing to worry about. All right, so you say it'll be empty four days before they move it? Yeah. What about the license plate? Hey, I got them. I'm even going to make up a little sign for them, too. Yeah, how about gone fishing? <laughs> you got the 12. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe this is a good time to lay back and figure out what we're getting into here. Hey, babe. I mean, we know what we're into. You're sure? Yeah. How about you? Of course. Sure. This isn't Dick and Jane go to Grandma's, you know? Once we push the button, it's a federal crime. We're in the clear now. We're straight. But once we go, if it sours, it means prison, maybe the gas chamber. I know. I understand. It has to be done. That's right. It has to be done. So, uh... Let's get it on, huh? All right, it's on. Yeah, I visited him in the hospital five or six times since they took my bullet out of him. You know what really bothers me? How a 17-year-old kid like that thinks. He steals a car, right? Then when he's busted, he pulls out a 38. I mean, what makes him think he can go one-on-one -on -one with a cop who's trained to use a gun? Get any answers? No. Sure got a lot of questions, though. Did the uh, shooting have anything to do with you thinking about uh, leaving the department? Sure, that was part of it, yeah. But it goes deeper. So I'm thinking about teaching, you know, criminology. Find some answers to some of those questions. What makes a kid like that tick? But it's not using the gun that's bothering you. Yeah, it is. Uh, sometime I'm tempted to uh, hesitate. I see somebody uh, innocent looking. What about someone like Nick Tanager? Well, that bothers you? I don't know. When I saw him that night on Broadway, he spotted me, too, ducked into a doorway. And I could see his hand go into his pocket. It was like slow motion, the automatic coming back out into his hand. In four years, I've seen a lot of people blown away, seeing what a magnum slug can do. Well, I had sort of a choice, go for my gun, or throw a shoulder into him and go for his. <sighs> Pretty dumb, huh? Well, by the book, yeah, but you took the man alive. I mean, you stand in trial. There's a lot of people very happy to see that man stand trial. <laughs> This is mine, remember? The decision to shoot or not, does it get any easier with experience? No. No, I think it gets tougher. At least for most of us. Canceling somebody out, you know? 
Think we'll get a conviction on the trial? Yeah, it's a lock. See ya. The lady deputy sat right there on the other phone and listened to every word we said. Same breakfast every morning. It's like we're the prisoners. I think my thermometer must be broken. It took my temperature this morning. It was normal. <laughs> You phone your dad again. Tell him to drop by the restaurant after the thing blows over, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, sit down somewhere. Don't get up, don't scream. Jesus, Mary and Joseph! She's sort of been kidnapped. No! 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 Delicatessen, I can just see you with a 60 pound pack. <clears throat> so that's what you do, huh? One of those gun ho fellas who eats dry food and freezes his, his feet. Mike, the jury's been kidnapped. The whole damn jury. Morton. Deputy's been ahead, sir. Citizen reports that shots have been fired from the bus. How bad is he? Could have been a lot worse. They must have pumped a whole clip at him. Got an APB working on that bus? No, sir. Sorry about that. I didn't find out what went down until right now when I was talking to the deputy. I got it. Anybody else hurt? Not that I know of, sir. Kept the place pretty well cleared until they took the jury out. Is that the Tanager jury, sir? That's what it was, yeah. <laughs> Just covered. Notify the Marin County Police that it. Never mind, I'll do it. Take a look at all those casings. Must have been an automatic weapon. Yes, sir, M16. 
How do you know all that? I was in the army in Nam. Mike, it's part of the bus going south on mission past 10. OK, listen. Get those casings to the lab as soon as possible. Morton, come along with us. I need all the units we can get. Stay on Van Ness, get the 12 men cross over the mission. Inspectors 8-1 to headquarters in pursuit of a silver Mark IV tour bus going south on mission. Request you clear frequency for all out unit pursuit and intercept. Now what you call it? It could be. Close in. 317, possible subject vehicle sighted. Mission and 17. Proceeding at posted speed. Three Henry 17. Maintain visual contact. Do not apprehend. Vehicle may contain hostages. I repeat, do not apprehend. Just paste it on, Ms. Klein. It'll help the communication problem. All right. Let me go over the rules briefly. No noise will be permitted. Someone will be on guard at all times, and although we don't want to use these, we will. Miss, this lady, Mrs. Whalen, is a diabetic. Will any provisions be made for her? No. Any other questions? Yeah, do you mind telling us what the hell this is all about? I thought that was pretty obvious. Not to me, it isn't. The case was already a mistrial. Isn't that what you people are after, a mistrial? You are being held for the release of Nick and Marie Tanninger, and a suitable ransom. It's crazy. Then I go. It's crazy. Everything's ready below. All right. Come on, get moving. Get below. Get below fast. Move. Oh, God. Oh, 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 Inspectors 8-1 in high-speed pursuit of vehicle going west on Monterey. To all units, Monterey and 19. <laughs> Tied up Dan said he'd care of him. Found this by the bus driver's seat. He must have dropped it. They really pulled it, huh? Yeah. No driver, no jury. to us if the authorities don't let your friends go. I wouldn't worry about that, Mr. Barbato. Mr. Barbato is supposed to worry about us. He's our jury foreman. We have a right to know. In time, OK? This is as good a time as any. Right now. All right. A set of demands is being delivered. They'll have it soon. It calls for a schedule of executions if there's no compliance or if they don't take us seriously. Executions? Oh, my God. I have to go to the bathroom, please. I'm speaking to you as 
one of the many friends of Nick and Marie Tanninger. Their recent trial has convinced us that the American legal system is a farce, and so we've decided to hold it hostage. The Tanninger jury is now in our custody. They will live or die at our discretion until certain conditions are fulfilled. Here are the demands. The Tanningers must be released at once. You will fly them and those wishing to leave with them to a free country of our choosing. You will pay a forfeit of $5 million for the freedom of your 12 representatives. You have 33 hours to announce your compliance and to make all arrangements. At 6 p.m. tomorrow, if you've not agreed to our demands, the first of your jurors will be executed and the rest will follow. You are now on notice. The clock is running. Idiots! Those weirdos are going to kill mailmen and housewives because the system buds them. Free country of their choice. Where's that? You know, that's got to be the Rosen girl. All right. Here you are. Susan Rosen, Arlen Washington, Gary Yelenick, Barbara Ross. Now, there's your Tanninger family. We have all the investigation jackets on them right here. All the interrogation reports, everything on them except where they are right now. Well, the ball is in your court, Mike. You handle the investigation, I'll give you all the backup you need. And what I need from you is manpower. Okay. I need all the men you can spare from the detective division. All the guys in uniform ought to be in OT. Vacations canceled. You got it. Let me fill in the chief. City Hall's going to have to make some kind of statement. Now, as soon as what's on that tape gets onto the street, everybody's going to expect an answer. All right, I'll have it duped. One for the mayor's office and one for the chief of police. The original stays right here with us. Time's running. How many copies of the photos you want? Who knows? 50, 150. Who knows how many copies you need? There's one thing I do know, though. We've got to talk to those deputies again. The ones who are on that bus. Lieutenant? Yes. I'd uh, like to follow through on one thing, if it's okay. What's that? I uh, used to work part-time down at the city bus bar on summer vacations. The uh, drivers used to log in and log out time and mileage every day. Well, that's good. Then we can tell how far the bus went and narrow down the area. Go ahead. Follow through on that. Guy's nice, smart. Yeah, he's got plenty up here. He's a little rough around the edges, but, oh, he's loaded up here. <laughs> okay, who are we going to take with us? Marsden from Undercover. He's pretty savvy with the radical groups. Gordy Walton. What about Fletcher? Good man. Oh, my God. I don't want to die like this. We're not going to die, dear. Yeah, sure, Mrs. Strauss. Those are toy guns those freaks are carrying. This is the deputy they shot outside the restaurant. Oh, I don't think there's any sense in talking like that. I think Breitbach is right. The police will find us and they'll get us out. Police? The police are going to look here? All right, then. We've got to try to help ourselves. If they're going to lock us up alone like this, maybe we could put together some kind of a plan. Shh. You shouldn't talk like this. Maybe they have a microphone hidden someplace. We can't just sit. We've got to help ourselves. We can't depend on anyone finding us here. <laughs> Boy, are we in big trouble. I've been looking at all of you, and there isn't a single person here I'd want to be stuck in an elevator with, let alone life or death. There isn't a soul in this room that's going to take on those kids. James. James was in Vietnam. He was a soldier. Like I said, big trouble. All right, this is your lunch. Maybe we'll bring some coffee later. Where's the can opener? Miss, that lady, Mrs. Whalen, she's not well. And she's, uh, she's in the restroom. She needs insulin or something like that. Is there any way that you could get it for her? Sure, Mr. Barber. I'll run right down to Speedy Mart. Hey, listen. This is a serious thing. Without medicine, Mrs. Whalen could... Well, she should have her medicine. Well, I suggest that we just wait and see where her name falls on the list, hmm? Well, 
what list? What list? I was in the back on the floor, man. I heard the shots and some people scared, you know. Uh, moaning like that. Nothing else. I was pretty scared myself. What about the traffic? Well, come on, you're a driver. You can tell there's heavy traffic. You're stopping a lot of lights. Uh, what about a cable car route? You feel the uh, tracks under the tires? No, no, no. no nothing like that. Uh, is this going to take long? Because the, the TV news guys are downstairs, and they want me to say something for TV, you know. Look, Sanders, you got something to say, you tell me. Six o'clock news, you know, they're not going to save this jury. Now, how about smells? Did you go buy a bakery? And when you stopped, did you, uh, smell any fresh paint? Gasoline? Try to remember. Anything at all. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I was too frightened. I was afraid I was going to be killed. Homicide Stone. Yeah, where? What time? No, Steve's got an appointment to take a run at the Tanagers. I'll take it, though. Give me the address. Yeah, I see that you got a problem. But what I don't see is, what do you think that I can do about it? Okay, Nick, we got a situation where nobody can win, and you got 12 innocent people in between. Nobody's that innocent. Anyway, we told you. We don't know where they are. Okay, what about this one? The two of you go on television, you make an appeal to your family not to harm the hostages. You're saying we can make a deal? No, there's no deal, Nick. But I think you ought to cooperate. Look at it pragmatically. Now, all right, we've got a mistrial. But there is going to be another trial. You can count on that. Now, you can do yourself nothing but good if you get on the record now as repudiating this kidnapping. Yeah, but what's that going to do for the people, man? What people? What are you talking about? Well, the people, everybody. I mean, what's going to keep the system from giving a shift to some other guys just like it did to me? What's going to happen to human rights? It... Oh, Nick, you're just such a humanist. You know, you got such a record to prove it. Armed robbery, assault, manslaughter. Why don't you just come off it, huh? Now, look, Marie, you always said you are doing this for the little guy. You said it when I busted you. You said it in court. Now, who exactly are those 12 hostages? They are incidental. Incidental? What happens to them? in light of the larger issue, is unimportant. If they have to be executed to... Executed, huh? Executed! All right, I've had it. I've just had it. Officer, your jacket. Thank you very much. If they got anything else to say, you let me know, will you? Oh, please, officer, don't go away mad now. Hey, Nick, I'm not going away mad. Not hey, I'm sorry about that, Nick. I want him busted. Banachek, you fire against him. Like hell I will. Now, you know damn well what's going to happen. Gary, Susan, Arlen, they're going to kill those 12 people. And I'm going to have to go before a judge and file for a change of venue because we can't get a fair trial in this city. I'll be denied, but in a crazy way, I'll be right. You couldn't get a fair trial in Siam, Tasmania, or anywhere else after this vile act. <laughs> you were the greatest argument for the death penalty I've ever seen. Someone phoned in a tip. Said they saw a truckload of people going into one of these warehouses here. So they're trying to transfer the passengers? What we found was a rented truck and 26 hot storefront mannequins. We figured we may as well cover the place while we're here. How'd you do that bus mileage? Pretty good. Bus checked in last night with uh, 66,221 miles. Wait a minute. They had the deputies logging it? Yes, sir. I went to the bus and took the mileage it had when we first stopped it. It came to... Hold it. Never mind the numbers. Just give me the miles. 14. 14 miles. Then I retraced to where we first spotted the bus. That came to uh, almost five miles from here to here. So that leaves nine. 
Right. Uh, we got four, four and a half miles where they dropped them off, the same to when the police spotted them, right? Yeah, we spotted the bus right here for the first time. With a radius of four to five miles, that gives us a search area between... 70 and 80 square miles. Yes, that's right. So that's that's our search area. Yeah, but that's some area. You got a few thousand houses, warehouses, condemned buildings. You got the waterfront running from here to there. By six tomorrow night? That looks impossible. Well, impossible or not, this is our search area. Come on. Yeah, we're still digging for possibilities. Now, you were with the Tanagers for months. Did they ever hide anything, or did they ever store anything where they thought they wouldn't be found? Store what? Anything, you know. Guns, ammunition, money, pamphlets, anything at all. No. How about a garage? Or an old abandoned house? An empty theater? You know who's next, don't you? Styles. You've got plenty of protection. These two detectives are with you at all times. For how long? We have to do it all over again now. The trial, the testimony, everything. They're going to have 100 different chances to kill me again. And when the next trial is over, what am I supposed to do? They will be in jail then. All of them? All of them, believe me. It's not like when Gareth was in the group and Marie was directing things. Nick took over and they all became murderers. They're going to kill me now for giving evidence. There's no chance that they're going to no. let Nick and Marie no lose chance at all. Believe me, no chance at all. They're going to kill me. They'll kill me in a second, just like they're going to kill those other people. Susan's not going to let them live. You don't know what she's like. They're going to all be slaughtered. And just drifted away, you know, like these kids do these days. Didn't help. She didn't have a father to keep her in line. He walked out on us when Barbie was three. It's not easy for the single parent, you know. No, imagine it must be pretty difficult. I have met those Tattengers. Do you know that? They have been here, right here. Nick sat where you're sitting. They just came in here with Barbie one day. They expected me to do for them. Barbie, too. They expected me to give them money. Did you give it to them? You better believe I did. Those people scared the life out of me. Just a sad thing when a mother is afraid of her own daughter. But I am afraid of mine. Now, Barbara, she's just not as strange as those other people. She, she never hurt anybody. But still, no sense responsibility. And then she got pregnant. The boy doesn't seem to think that he is responsible anymore. She got pregnant. I got the bills. The gynecologist, the pediatrician. Excuse me, Barbara's got a baby? Oh, yes. Little girl. Three. This child lives with Barbara? Eight, ten weeks out of the year. Maybe, if it suits her the rest of the time she's with me. Is she here now? She's in the hospital. Anything serious? Not at first. A little tyke took cold a couple of weeks ago. Doctors put her into county general. This is some sort of a upper respiratory business infection. Does uh, Barbara visit her in the hospital? No. And of course she won't now, will she? Nurses tell me that she calls from time to time, though. I'll get those bills. The hospital. Yes, ma'am. It won't do any good to worry about the time, Mr. Lee. What happens, happens. Look, we've got to get something organized. We can't just do nothing. What do you want to do? You want to send out for a pizza? Look, I don't think you're particularly amusing, unless you've got some reason not to be frightened out of your wits like the rest of us. You know something we don't? What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. He, he's upset, Miss Chamberlain. You think Miss Chamberlain has something to do with them? Figure it out yourself. You better spell that out, mister. Come on, come on. There's nothing to explain. What we're all hearing now is a lot of nerves falling apart. We've been together almost 14 weeks. We've gotten along OK until now. That's true. I mean, everybody's been so nice until now. You shouldn't spoil it. 14 weeks down the toilet. What do you mean? Trial's over, ain't it? We give it 14 weeks. We haven't decided nothing. I decided. What? What would your vote have been, James? I can sure tell you how I'd have voted. Oh, I don't think we should talk about that. I mean, we, we don't know for sure. Sure we do. Miss Trial's been declared. We're out of it. We can do anything we want. Vote. Anything. All right, Phil. Let's do it. 
vote. Guilty. Wrong. If you want an honest vote, it's got to be a secret vote. Especially now. You don't think there's any questions about how it's going to go, do you? Yeah. There might be, sure. Really? Well, that's very interesting. She has a point. It's got to be a regular secret vote. But we'll need uh, paper and pencils. I have no paper. I don't even have any more tissue. You want paper? I'll get your paper. Oh, I have a pencil. Oh, you're kidding. What's the matter with it? It takes a plumber to know the many uses of this paper. Uh, do we write guilty or not guilty? Or... Well, what do we use symbols? G or N? Okay, G or N. And when you're done making your marking, I'll just put them all in my pocket so they won't be in any order. Uh, everybody got their paper? Yes. Now. This has really got to be an honest vote. What I mean is, we shouldn't vote the way we feel about them now. We've got to vote the way we would have voted before we were kidnapped. That seems fair. I remember exactly how I would have voted. So do I, pal. So do I. Follow her, I'll follow you. Come on, move it! Pick up the lanterns. Get that lantern. You don't look so well, Mrs. Whalen. I've got diabetes, and I stand a good chance of being shot. What would you like, tap dancing? Look, maybe I can do something for you. What do you need, insulin? No, I use oral diabetic tablets. They seem to work better than insulin. But listen, whatever... Always carry an extra prescription, you know, just in case. Oh, God, do you think you could get some help for me tonight? Yeah, maybe, maybe tonight. Oh, God bless you. All right, get in faster. Just keep moving to the back. Come on, people, move it. Come on, you have plenty of time to look around later. Just keep moving to the back. All right, this is where you sleep, so make yourselves comfortable. You can split up, men, women, or whatever. There's a couple of toilets back there, and one of us will be behind this door, so don't open it. Believe me, don't open it. We'll be taking you out tomorrow, and, uh, well, good night. I'd give my left ear for a cigarette right now. I'd give both ears for welding tanks and a cutting torch. Should we just take whichever bets we want? We could vote on it like we did for restaurants if you want to make a production out of it. Hey, speaking of voting, yeah, Bob, what about... Uh, why don't we count them votes? Yeah, Bob, I'll count them. Come on. Come on, what's the count? Guilty. Ten. Two. Not guilty. Not guilty. Two. Two. Not guilty. Well, now we know. I suggest we all go betty bye. Some kind of respiratory infection. Does Barbara Ross know that? Yes, sir. We checked pediatrics. She's called twice now. So we thought we could control the phones. We'll get the phones controlled. You need the hospital's permission. We've got it, sir. 
We talked to the administrator. He says under the circumstances, they'll go with us. That's the best thing I've heard today. How long does it take to set up? It's, it's already been done. See, the head nurse has agreed that if Barbara calls, she'll tell her the doctor's with her child, then she has to call back. OK, this is how I want to play it. We'll get in touch with Mars, and he and I will take the first shift at the hospital. The two of you go out in the street. I want every unmarked car and a photo of Barbara Ross. We'll cover this whole city and cover it good. Yes, about two degrees up since morning, doctor. Yes, we're continuing the IV drip. Yes, sir. Thank you. Tricks, Nurse Summers. I, I, I see, yes, uh huh? Uh, you say you're a friend of the family. Uh, fine, uh, just let me get the child's chart. One moment, please. But, but I don't understand. Why is the doctor there now? It, it, it's, it's late. Is there any kind of trouble? I, is she worse? Well, could you check, please? Payphone. 900 block Montgomery. 900 block Montgomery. Payphone. Repeat, all units. Contact me. 900 block Montgomery. Public telephone. This is 81. I'm on it three blocks away. Look, I'm sorry. I just can't wait. I'll call back tomorrow. This one really bad. Looks like it's near the heart. Anybody call an ambulance? Yes, sir, I did. Well, we're not gonna wait any longer. Open the back door of that car. Let me have your partner in a lead car. Come yes, on. sir. Come on. The two of you stay here. Call in the crew. Yes, sir. San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Special guest star, Michael Douglas. 
also starring Richard Hatch. With guest stars in alphabetical order, Patty Duke Aston, Darlene Carr, Tina Chen, Jan Clayton, Susan Day, Norman Fell, Gary Frank, Paula Kelly, Jim McMullen, Doris Roberts, James Shigeta, Barry Sullivan, Dick Van Patten, Joseph Wiseman. Tonight's episode, The Thrill Killers, Part 2. Yes, sir, I did. Well, we're not gonna wait any longer. Open the back door of that car. Let me have your partner in a lead car. Come yes, on. sir. Come on. Sorry. The two of you stay here. Call in the crew. Yes, sir. Black Franklin Hospital, we're coming in the ER with a chest wound. Extensive blood loss, shallow breathing. Steve. Listen, Steve. It's your partner, Mike. Mike Stone. Buddy boy. Just a couple more blocks, Steve. Hold on. Damn it, hold on, I said. He's cold. Don't you quit on me now. You hear me? Don't quit on me. You know the gun caliber, if it was a magnum or anything? We don't know. Well, dig out his wall to see what type of blood he's got. His blood type is A positive. Two years ago, he had a penicillin reaction. All right, flash the blood bank. Tell him we'll hang three units of A positive. Uh, what are you dressing? Packs, vascular clamps. Surgical grave. The cops could be outside right this minute. I wasn't followed. I'm sure I wasn't. I think they placed my call to the hospital. The cop knew my name. You idiot! Is he dead? Yes. Are you sure? I'm sure. So, well, at least he didn't follow you. Oh, get him out of here. We won't take the next message yet. I have to think. Taking him to surgery. Doesn't look good. How bad? Well, the bullet stopped around the heart somewhere, and they don't know how much damage is done. I, uh, I better call Jeannie. This will really shake her. Shake her? All right, Dan. Now, just what the hell happened? We're not sure, Captain. Marston's down at the shooting site now. The lieutenant asked him to put a team on it. Well, if we want any answers, we'd better get down to Montgomery. Come on. Were you there when it happened, Mike?
Is it really bad? Daddy. I'm coming down. No, no, I want to be there with you. I'm coming down right away. Daddy, I'm so sorry. The guy at the gas station up the street heard the shot, thought it was a backfire. What about the cartridge casing? Get live from the lab, guys have it. Uh, we also have a tire burn near where Steve went down. Uh, we think it could be the girl's car. Small, probably a compact. Dan, how's Steve doing? Touch and go. Captain? Yes? This is Mr. Uh, Carver. Kramer. Uh, Kramer. Kramer. How are you? I've got the drugstore down the block. I see. He made the Ross girl. Barbara Ross? Oh, that one. How long ago? Mm, maybe like an hour ago. What'd she want? Well, she wanted to fill a prescription uh, for oral diabetic tablets for somebody named uh, Rose Whalen. Whalen, isn't that one of the jurors? Yes, sir. You filled it? Well, hey, look, how was I to know? I mean, you know, that, that prescription's kosher. I mean, she looked just like a normal, ordinary person. I... It's OK, Mr. Kramer, it's all right. Did you happen to notice, was she driving? Yeah, she got into a beat-up old Falcon, a blue one, blue color. Well, there are only a couple of thousand of those around. You didn't happen to notice a license number. No, I'm sorry, I didn't think to look. No, it's OK, it's all right. You've been a big help. Thank you. Uh, we'll keep this if you don't mind, huh? Oh. They heard it on the radio. That's the second one. First the deputy, now the police. Oh, no. She was a nice one. She was going to get me my medicine. I don't believe it. Believe it. What are you doing? I have to tell them. Tell them what? Not to kill me. Oh, oh please, they're going to kill us now. Please. Oh, please, I've got to get out of here. Jenny, Jenny, we all oh, want to get oh, out. Please, if you open please, that door, please, Jenny. Please, please, Bring them in here now. Take it right now. Oh, Jenny. Come back to your bunk. You're going to be all right, honey. You just need a little rest. Well, at least we know one thing now that we didn't know before. She's one of the two voted not guilty. That leaves just one, doesn't it? Steve out of surgery yet? He's in intensive care. How did the operation go? We don't know yet. I'm uh, Dan Robbins. This is my daughter, Jeannie. Dan's in homicide with us. Hi, Dan. Did you uh, get anything new? Not much more than I gave you on the phone. The uh, Ross girl used a 22 caliber automatic. We found the casing. Did she have an accomplice? No, no trace. It's impossible. I tell you, it's impossible Steve getting shot if she didn't have anyone with her. Lieutenant, it might make sense. She's so innocent looking. No. Inspector Keller is still in ICU, and he'll be staying there for the next few hours. So everything is all right. The worst is behind us. Lieutenant, please, now don't misunderstand. He's got a good chance, but he's critical, and we're a long way from coming out of it. Well, then why aren't you in there with him? Lieutenant, the only reason I'm here is because Dr. Lowell is with him, and he's the best there is. Sorry I can't give you a brighter prognosis. I wish to God that the inspector hadn't been shot in the heart. In heart? Yes. Until we sewed him up, he had a hole in his heart. Now we just have to wait and see how well he snaps back. Sleep if you can. 
forget the Tanningers now. Forget all of it, for a couple of hours anyway. Here, come on. I'll stay here, and I'll let you know if there's anything you'd want to know. Yeah. I'll keep in touch with you, Junior. I'll be at the office. The office? Why, can you just... Okay, I'll take care of you. You know, we ought to listen to that tape again. Especially the part about the ransom. Maybe we missed something there. He wants to be a professor. It's really bright when you come out of that hospital. Really bright. you're going to kill me. I won't do it. You want me to draw for you? Do it, Barbato. Three. Two before me. What are you? Seven. All right. Who hasn't drawn? Me. Take down the order. Who's first? So it has been a most difficult, painful decision we have had to make. But this city and the world cannot tolerate a tyranny of extremists. It cannot accede to a law of the lawless. I trust the families of the jurors will understand when I say that we cannot and will not release Nick and Marie Tanager without due process of law. We will not be blackmailed into paying one cent of ransom. What we will discuss is the absolute safe return of the 12 hostages in exchange for the peaceful surrender of their kidnappers. Accordingly, we will need the assistance of every citizen in apprehending these criminals. They're Please not going to do it. They don't believe us. That's too bad. I guess we're just going to have to make it very clear to them, aren't we? These are pictures of the four suspected kidnappers. If you have reason to believe you know where they can be found, please call the San Francisco police at 553-9111. Lieutenant, Miss Stone, you can see Inspector Keller now if you wish. As they are armed and dangerous. Again.
Marston. Now we've got over 120 men out there searching. And so far, not one lead. Not one. I need your savvy. You know whatever there is to know about radical groups. Put yourself in their shoes. What are they thinking? Well, I figure they'll send us another one of those flaky tapes. Very hard line, you know? They gotta run the bluff. They've gotta come out, right. One of them has to take that tape and put it where we can get it. The point is, where would they make the drop? Well, very few places possible. A couple of printers have done pamphlets for them. Or it could be that uh, FM radio station. K-Z-K-A? Yeah, that one. They got a disc jockey who digs a radical scene. Uh, and of course, there's the Walden Post, the underground newspaper. Right, right. They used to print all the bulletins for the weathermen. They've got a place down on Broadway. You know, you're not as unhip as you look. They were the go-betweens for the tanagers on that first kidnapping. But if you had one choice, just one, where would you put it? My money would be on the Walden Post. The lieutenant. I could be wrong. OK, we'll stake out all of them. We've already got their families covered. But I think you're on the money. The Walden Post. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying at all. I just happen to agree with one or two of their original concepts from before they started with kidnapping and weirdness. This could be a better place to live. I think there are some people who might have to put some limits on what this system can do. Not you, not the Tanningers. Why do you keep doing that? Why do you keep putting me with them? Who said I was with them? You? Huh. Of course you're not. But you heard the old story, haven't you? If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. Yeah, yeah, I heard it all my life. All right, so you caught me. I admit it. I'm a duck. But what I'm not is a tanager. Mr. Breitbach, apparently you think that Miss Chamberlain here cast the other not guilty vote. She didn't. It was me. You. Why would you possibly vote him not guilty? We agreed to vote in the frame of mind we were then. I remember thinking, in my mind, there was a reasonable doubt, because I wasn't buying styles. A reasonable doubt. I don't think so now. statement. That is, you are. Sit down. Me? Yes. You're going to read it. You don't have to study it first. My, my, my name is Thurman Barber. I'm one of the Tanninger jurors. This message is for the city of San Francisco and all its uh, political lackeys. They have badly underestimated the, the dedication of the friends of Marie and Nicholas Tanninger. That was a serious error. To assure you of their determination to carry out the original terms, they hereby announce the, the, the schedule of executions. The names have been drawn by lot. First one to be shot at 6 o'clock tonight will be Thurman Barber, me. Twelve hours later, two more jurors will be executed. And 12 hours after that, four additional hostages will be shot. None of this need happen if their terms and conditions are met. That's the end of the prepared statement. I'd, I'd like to say something on my own. All of us know, if the authorities don't, that these people mean what they say. I'm to be the first 
So I'm pleading for myself and my family. I have a wife and two children. And I'm asking the authorities to please reconsider. For God's sakes, reconsider. That's all I have to say. He's not going to take us anywhere, but maybe this might. I'm to be the first. So I'm pleading for myself. Did you hear that? Well, hear the ship? Family. Mike, this whole city is a seaport. You can hear ships everywhere. All right, go back to the slam again. I want to hear that door close. That's the end of the prepared statement. There it is. I'd like to say something on my A steel own. door or a hatch. The kind they have on large ships or a freighter. And do you hear that? All of us know. Hollow metallic echo sound? But the authorities don't. What do you guys think? You mean you've run a psychiatrist to tell you it's a door and a boat? No, Lenny, just stick with me. I've got something else for you. Dan? I'll buy it. A ship would be a good place to stash 12 people. That's what you want to do with the manpower? Yes, sir. The waterfront? Well, the guys in the lab say it could have been recorded in a small room, probably of tin or steel construction. Now, if that's true, then the jury has to be there. They wouldn't be schlepping 12 people all over San Francisco. I tell you, they are on a boat. What can I tell you? You think they're on a boat? Find a boat. But make sure you find it before 6 o'clock tonight. Well, look. All right, Dan, I want you to get in touch with the Coast Guard. I want somebody who knows all about those ships on the port. And then get in touch with Marston and tell him I want all his manpower on the waterfront. Shipyard, China Basin, Wharf. I want all the guys out of uniform. I want them in unmarked cars. I don't want them dashing in there looking like neon lights saying cops. And then, look, you're a smart guy. You know what to tell me. Saw the gun come out. And I was looking right in her eyes. She pulled the trigger. Really read her wrong. Well, you're here. We got you back. It was close, though. Close. The nurse told me Mike called again. Yeah, I told him I decided to take the job. 
Well, if you really believe in this, don't let my Kanye out of it, huh? Maybe the last crack I get at it. Almost made that decision. Day too late, huh? They heard it on the radio. He was killed. That girl, Susan, didn't even blink. Like she cared for him as much as she cares for us. Okay, okay. Now that leaves only three of them. And three guns? Well, we gotta get one of the guns. Now, if somebody takes out Washington, we can handle those two girls easy. Those girls will kill as quick as the men. We, you're the only experienced one. Tell us how to do it. I don't know. James, please. This is our last chance. It's only three hours until somebody is... Until me. They'll kill me now. We need a diversion. Something to distract the man. Th there's nothing here to use. Maybe the bathroom. If one of us stayed in there, pretended to be sick, was trying to escape something. It's got to be a man. If it's a woman, then one of the girls are going after her. Okay, I'll go in there. But when he brings me out, somebody's got to grab him. Then we can all take care of him. you got to go for the M16s. But, but the girls, one of them will be with him. We do what he says. We get the gun. Okay, look. Reed, you, Arbato, and Lee, you take care of the guy. Mac and you and Barbara take care of the girl. <laughs> is sick or something. Right back. Get your tail out here. I don't feel so good. In about a three count, I'm about to show you how you can feel a whole lot worse. through solid steel, you got another thing coming. What's your problem? The, uh, the head, head's not working. Tough. Is anybody going to say anything about it not working? Anybody? Never mind, go cover the door. I hear any more banging and crashing in here. Six o'clock is gonna come pretty quick for you. Yeah, come let them see me. Comfortable, relaxed now, Winston? Yes, comfortable. That's good. You're comfortable and safe now, Winston. Just your friends here. Lieutenant Stone told you about a ship, right, Winston? A ship? A ship, yes. Nick and Marie are on a ship. Maybe you know where the ship is. No. I don't know. I was never there. Try to remember. Nick may have said something on Marie. A big ship. What about a boatyard? The wharf? Maybe when you were at the wharf? No. Then how about the really big ships? No. No freighters. <laughs> The 
a fleet, will you? It has to be an empty ship. Was it in the city or across the bay? Shut up, will you? You're knocking off. It's down near six o'clock. Oh, this takes time. Quiet, comfortable sleep. Tell me about the ship. Marie said it was empty, abandoned. We're on board an empty ship. Could it have been the mothball fleet? No. Some other place. Old ships. Old ships? What kind? Like a tomb. Herman Barber, right? Yes, sir. His ID was on him. Yeah, who found him? Officer Peterson, about 15 minutes ago. They wanted us to find him. That's why they dumped him here. It's insane. Insane? I'll give you insane. They go out and buy medicine for one of the jurors. They execute another. That's insane. Take a life, give a life. They think they're playing God. Tell me, did you get in touch with the Coast Guard yet? They're waiting for us at their communication center. Ten and a half hours, and they killed two more. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Commander Judd, in charge of the facility. The chief wanted me to give you the full list. It's got the names and locations of every ship in port. Well, how about the dead ships, Commander? Empty, abandoned, in dry dock, or in salvage? How many are we looking at? Well, if we're talking about that size, I'd say about 60 right now. Of course, if we include the merchant reserve fleet, it could be over 200. It's almost impossible to know where to start. That's what they figured on. Where do we go to get this thing organized? Communication center, come on. I heard those kids shot one of the men out of the jury. Six o'clock tomorrow morning is our bottom line, or two more die. Yeah, it'll take us 20 minutes to patch into your patrol unit. Make that 10. Do our best. Time you go. Half past 11. Got a quarter to 12. You're running fast. I don't know if you skinny duff when I told you Barbara would be alive right now. Oh, why you? And that goes for off. you, too. Listen, if you hadn't voted yourself into the bathroom... All right, you two. What difference does it make now? We botched it. We needed a better diversion. You needed more than that, Buster. Stop it, everybody. We shouldn't be picking on each other now, of all times. No, you don't have to tell me. I've got eyes for myself, haven't I? Tough day, huh? Uh, Gordy was wondering, if we do find them, do you want them to be ready with the uh, tear gas? Tear gas? Yeah. We'll try to talk them out of it first, and if they don't listen, we'll use the gas. And if that doesn't work? We don't have any other choice, do we? Guns. 
sensitive is that equipment? Oh, it's good. Very good. Any vibrations at all, we'll pick up right here. Then it'll register on the uh, screen and then in the earphones. Footsteps, a hatch opening. Even voices have a slight effect on the oscilloscope. But we have all five ships channeling right through here. idea where the people are? Not exactly. Uh, I have them in at least two positions. Midship and aft. Midship and aft. Lieutenant, come on. Take your men. Let's move. Well, we don't have much time. We've got to find them first. We can't go dashing up that gangplank. Maybe we could have one of my men swim out, climb up on the freighter, cross over, and see if he can find the jury's location. All right, go ahead. Sir. Lieutenant, I'd like to join him. I know the jury people from the Tanager kids. Gordy's men don't. But can you swim? Yes, sir. I've been skin diving my whole life. Oh, no, what, no, wait a minute. Lieutenant, I don't mean I'm this... the only one who knows who's who on that ship. I could carry a dry pack with a walkie-talkie, be in touch with you the whole time. All right, go ahead. Now remember, they can see as well as you can. Dan, where are you? I'm on board. It's all clear. All right, everybody up. Let's go. It isn't time yet. All right, come on, folks. Let's move. Is having a message from the mayor or the governor? No, nah, there's no message, man. Let's get out and get out, folks. No, no, I'm not going. I'm not going. Shut her up. I'm not going to go. Shut up. I'm warning you to shut her up. I'm not going. You better make a move. All right, okay. No.
aboard. Just saw them, they're moving. Better hold on out there until I know where they're going. There's 11 jurors, three challengers going aft. We'll hold right here. Let us go. You're not like the others. You're wrong, I am. The Rosen girl in Washington had Regan Jenny Rios. They're headed towards the engine room. The others are still in the wardroom at the rear. Move in. I'm going after Susan in Washington. Wait for me. I don't have time. James. I'm warning you. I'm warning you, don't move! Arlie, what's the matter? I've uh, got, got a little problem. Fantastic, Gene. Thanks a lot. Well, when are you going to come down and see us in the bullpit? She'll be down beginning next week after registration. How many kids do you have registered that class here? Do you know? Department head calls me last week. Entire class is filled. Not too bad, huh? Do you believe what he's telling you? <laughs> you know I'm going to miss this old tank. I'm going to miss you, too. A little bit, maybe. Sure. Sure, I know. You're gonna be great. Sure, sure. Just great. No, I mean it. But oh, we're still gonna see the ball games, right? Just because you're quitting the department doesn't mean you're quitting the ball club. Of course not. No way. You're on. Mike, I'll see that Steve gets settled, all right? Yeah. Yeah, you do that. Steve, it's good to see you. Take it easy, all right? Thanks a lot, Dan. Listen up. Take care of the big ape for us, will you? He needs all the help he can get. I uh, think we're going to sort of take care of each other. Yeah, that's the way it works. Michael, I'll see you soon. Yeah, sure. Good luck. Good luck.
do you think you're doing? Uh, nothing, sir. Uh, just sitting, sir. Uh, I figured you'd drive, sir. Oh, you did, huh? Well, since we're partners, don't you think you ought to be sharing the load? Or do you think you have a patsy here, and maybe you're going to sit back and enjoy everything while somebody else does the work? Uh, no, sir. I, I love to drive, sir. That's another thing I want to talk to you about. Yes, sir. That's it. That yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. I, I mean, uh, no, sir. This is the San Francisco Police Department. We have no yes, sirs and no no, sirs. Just do your job. Keep your mouth shut until I tell you to do something. San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Richard Hatch. With guest stars Howard Duff, Max Gale, Arlene Golanka, Paul Stevens, Alex Handelon, special guest star Tom Bosley. Tonight's episode, Dead or Alive. That's why you insist upon playing tennis twice a week. Well, it's my way of getting even. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll give you Bobby, Frank, and George. If you teach me that wicked serve. Why, so you can get even with me? No, so I can use it on my father. He thinks he's so good at everything. I wanna knock him down just one notch. Okay, it's a deal. I'll race you to the car. You cheated, Kathy. Bye. 
I can think of a better way to start the day. Tell me. No, you tell me. The name was Gail Dobbs. She and a girl named Kathy Deneen were signed up for the court from 9 to 11 p.m. Sometime between 11 and 11.30, she was beaten, raped, and strangled. Where is this Kathy Deneen? Ed Clark is picking her up. Hmm. Pretty girl. Yeah. Coroner thinks she put up quite a struggle. There was skin under her fingernails. And three of them on her right hand were broken off. Also, there's some fragments of glass on the ground over here. Possibly from a broken pair of glasses. I talked to the guy who runs the courts, and he saw her car was still here when he left at 11.30. It's the only one left in the lot. Well, didn't he check it out? Says there's always a car or two left in the lot overnight. Girl comes in her car, guy comes in his car, and then... And they both leave in one car. I know. Right. Morning. Is that the Deneen girl? She doesn't know anything. She didn't see anything or anybody, and she's on the verge of hysterics. Hysterics, huh? Why don't I ask her a couple of questions, then you can take her home? Oh, look, why don't you take a couple of men and canvas the neighborhood? Anything that was open all night, mm, gas station, coffee shop, anything at all. Ask if they saw anyone who looked as though he might have been in a fight. Did you um, notify the family? She's only got her father. He's out of town. They're trying to locate him. Mike, he's a heavyweight. Lots of money. OK. Why don't you see the manager get a list of all the people who played tennis here last night? I think we're going to have to talk to all of them. OK. Now, what route? 83. Does it run all night? Thanks a lot. Before the neighborhood canvas comes up zero. What about forensics? He said they'll have a prescription on the lens in a few hours, but the guy is definitely near sight. We have three teams checking out the people on the other courts. Nothing so far. The Deneen girl said that there was a man washing from the other side of the fence while they were playing tennis last night. Now, he interests me. You have any ideas? Yes. There's a bus route, a Route 83, that goes right by those tennis courts. I think we ought to question the drivers who worked that route last night. Yes, come in. Lieutenant Stahl, I'm George Driscoll, attorney. This is Larry Dobbs. Well, Mr. Dobbs, I'm very sorry. Please sit down. Uh, I'll be outside. everything that happened. Well, I won't be able to tell you the full detail until I get the medical examiner's report. Please. If I can ask the question, I can deal with the answer. What happened to my daughter? Well, your daughter had multiple bruises on the face and head. There was evidence of strangulation. Was she raped? I'm sorry. Sorry, Lieutenant. I guess I wasn't as prepared as I thought I was. I understand. She was a perfect thing, Lieutenant. Beautiful. Graceful like her mother. Perfect. Do you know who did it? Not yet, no. I want whoever did it punished. We'll find him, I promise you. We've got five teams working on it right now. Lieutenant. If there are any expenses, if there's any money you need to help find him, I have it. I don't care how much it costs. Just let me know, and I'll, I'll write a check. No, it won't be necessary. I just feel that I should help in some way. I, I feel that there, there must be something I can do. Well, there is something you can do. It's not a very pleasant task, but someone has to go down to the morgue and make a positive identification of... Remains? Why don't you let me take care of that? No, no. I'll, I'll do it. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. And uh, I would appreciate it if you'd let me know when you have anything. I, I know it's not procedure. But... I'll let you know. Thank you. Lieutenant. Okay. What's that? Names of the bus drivers on Route 83 last night. Ferenga, Holzman, Scott. You know, what took you so long? Oh, well, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that.
Are you all right, Larry? I don't believe it. Except that I just looked at her. She's really dead. And that bag of garbage who did it is still alive. Let it be, Larry. What are the chances of them ever finding him, George? Well, it's a good department. Stone is a good cop. I've seen him around over the years. Must be something I can do. Larry, the best thing you can do is just go home. Let everybody do their jobs. You Tom Ferenga? Yeah. What did I do? It's not what you did, it's <laughs> what you might have seen that interests us. Well, ain't nobody gonna read my rights or nothing? You know, I always wanted somebody to do that. Come oh, on, read no, me no, my rights! Wait a minute now, you don't have any rights. I don't have any rights. No, that's right. You're a witness, not a suspect. Ah, oh, that's pretty good. Now, look, come on in and have a seat. I only got 11 minutes before I take the thing back out no, in the jungle no again. thanks. Huh? We just saw the other two. You're the third man that works at Round 83, right? Yeah, I always double up on my shifts. Over time. Hey, you know what it costs to put braces on a kid's teeth these days? Listen, do you know by any chance what time you went by those tennis courts along that route? Was it between 9 and 11? Yeah, it's twice. Uh, it's only an hour and 50-minute route. Did you notice anyone hanging around the place, someone that might not belong? You mean, like, girl watcher? Well, they always hang around the tennis court. You know, when I'm driving by, sometimes I slow down and take a little peek myself. <laughs> yeah, but last night... Uh, yeah, well... There was a guy. Well, what, what is this all about, anyway? Well, a girl was raped and killed. What about this man? Well, he was a man. He was uh, driving a bread truck, and he was uh, watching the girls on the back court. So you mentioned the bread truck. He was parked in the bus zone, and I had to stop in the middle of the street. Parisian bread, I think. Was he wearing glasses? Yeah. Yeah, he was. He's big. Can you identify him? Give us a full description. Well, like I said, he was big. He was over six foot. He was white. He had on a uniform. And he also had on some very thick horn rim glasses. Give him a breakdown. They're only about 15. You should look that good, Rhoda. I did when I was 15. Yeah, well, that's been a few years. Not that many. You don't look that bad, Rhoda. Not for the mileage. The usual wear and tear. Okay, Buster, you've had your fun. Now you better say something nice before I get mad. I should come over to my place tonight. Say it. Just, uh, you and me? No pepperoni pizza? You better say it. You're beautiful. Let's make it my place. It's right here. I'd like to have a list of everyone who went out with trucks last night. It's 15. Look, fellas, I'm on my lunch break. I mean, it'll at least take a half hour to get that list. Not if you hurry. Well, can I wait till after lunch? Look, there's an easy way and there's a hard way. We've been doing it the easy way so far. All right, all right. Only because I don't need no trouble. But it ain't right. It never is. Uh, would you get that list, please? <sighs> hey, what are you getting so hard-nosed for? Just following your lead, boss. Six are black, three are over 60, and one is five foot two. Of the other five, these three are reds. This one here really lays in nice. Don Wilton. Four previous, two for eight. He beat both cases. Never did any time. You think we can pull a blood type on him? Well, there's a hospital record in one of the assault charges. That's my next stop. Okay, I'll take these prints down to the lab for a comparison. Did you get a uh, address on this guy? Not yet. He moved last week. We should have it by tomorrow. Just the file? Yeah, looks good. What have you got? Well, on the glasses, the guy is nearsighted. The best estimate is 40 over 60. Good. I've got to get these down to the lab. Where did you get these, Larry? I bought a file clerk. Are the facts correct? Well, it's an official record. They had this guy twice for rape, George. And he's never spent a day in jail. Not one. 
It's a difficult charge to prove, Larry. Maybe the women involved refuse to go to court and testify. What about this time? Can they make it stick this time? Can they send this guy to jail? That depends. On what? On the evidence. Which means there's a chance he could walk away from this one, too. Is that it? Oh, I can't say. That's why we have courts. I know all about the courts. But then you get a lot of law and damn little justice. Larry. And I want justice, George. I want a full measure of justice for this man. What you want is vengeance. Call it whatever you like. The police haven't even picked him up yet. He's still on the streets. Well, if they're not going to do anything about him, I am. I want 5,000, exactly like the proof copy. That picture, nice and clear. Yes, sir. Offset printing will give you a good gray scale. I want the whole town papered with these posters when the sun comes up. Well, that'll take some doing. I don't care how many people you have to hire or how much you have to pay them. Just get it done. Are you sure this is legal? You let me worry about that. If anybody asks you, just tell them you thought it was a practical joke. Shotgun? Well, that's in case he tried anything. A man's got a right to defend himself, and he's dangerous. Look, Mr. Uh... Zabraki. Mr. Zabraki, you tend to the building. We'll take care of Mr. Wilson, okay? Do you know where we can find him? No, I don't. Even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Withholding information from the police is a felony. Do you know that? Why should I tell you guys anything when somebody's willing to pay a million bucks for it? What are you talking about? Well, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Here. Where'd you get this? Well, they're all over the place. The whole neighborhood is papered with them. Thanks for the help. Come on. Hey, you recognize the phone number at the bottom next to ours? I certainly do. Larry Dobbs. I hope his phones get all jammed. The switchboard is probably lit up like a Christmas tree. What I'm afraid of is that somebody will try to shoot him. There's always some cowboy around who thinks he can do it all by himself. But he's going to have to shoot fast, because if Walton has seen these, he's on the move, and he's going to make himself hard to find. Just what we needed. <laughs> He'll probably start looking for his friends or family. Now with a million dollars on his head, doesn't have any friends. Well, let's start looking for his family. Give me the keys. I'm going to have a little talk with Dobbs. <laughs> Hey, Don. Ha! How you doing, brother? Harry. What happened? Did you get laid off again? Nah, I just uh, run in an errand. Hey, where are you going? Come on, I'll give you a ride. No, 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 no. no. I, I want to go for a walk. I'll see you later. Get in that car and do it right now. What are you doing there? Shit, you better do what I say now. Get in that car. <laughs> Don't kill me, don't kill me! What are you doing? It's him! This is the guy who's worth a million bucks! This is the guy who's a killer! Stop him! Stop him! I'm not implying that the police aren't doing their job. 
but uh, they can only work efficiently if they have the full cooperation and assistance of the citizens of San Francisco. The reward I offer is an obvious incentive, a cry for help. Whoever gets Wilton gets the money. That's all I have to say. Mr. Dobbs. Lieutenant? Could I talk to you for a minute? Of course. Are you responsible for this? Don't answer that, Larry. Lieutenant, I told you I want that man caught and punished. Well, let me tell you, we might have caught him if it hadn't been for these. I don't want mites. I want results. I want Wilton captured. You don't want him captured. You want him dead. You want an old-fashioned hanging party. That's a choice I made optional, Lieutenant. Anyway, it's too late. What's done is done. Not quite. You're under arrest. Now it's done. Wait a minute, Stone. You wait a minute. You'll have your chance when it gets to court. Well, I want to know on what charge. Penal Code Section 652. Offering a reward for the capture of a person dead or alive. Now, you do know that's a state crime, don't you? It's a misdemeanor. I looked it up, George. Come on, let's go. I'll be out on bail in an hour. You know, you probably will. But if anyone takes these things seriously and kills Wilton, I promise you, you'll be right back in again for complicity. Let's go. Hey, Rhoda. What are you doing here? I saw the poster. Sure, you can't miss them. Is it true what they say? No way, baby. I gotta stay hidden now. I gotta get it straightened out. Rhoda, I need some money. Money? Yeah, for a lawyer. Get, I... get back. They'll see you. Boy, why me? Well, well, what makes me the lucky one, huh? You are kind of my girl, aren't you? My purse is inside. I got about 50 bucks I can give you. Thanks, man. Sure. The guy in the poster? Yeah, only it's too bad I don't know where that weirdo is. Shh. Now, look, if I put him in your hands, will, will you split the money with me? You serious? Just answer me. Will you split? Yeah, I'll split. Oh. He's in the back of the alley. <laughs> Remember, we split, huh? What you find? Not much. No friends to speak of. His father's dead, but his mother's alive. Used to be a nurse. Only the hospital didn't have a foreigning address for her. Another dead end? Well, maybe not. One of the nurses who works there was a friend of the mother's, but she won't be on duty for another three hours. All cars vicinity of Bay and Seven. Homicide suspect identified as Donald Wilton. Fled on foot. <coughs> west on Bay Street. <laughs> suspect was wearing leather jacket. Woolen stocking cap, dark blue or black.
we need an ambulance. I call an ambulance. He's mine. He's, He's mine. It was me that caught him. I want a statement from him. I him from the cab around the corner. Get that statement from him. I chased him down. I got him down. Mike, here's his ID. Oh. Just take it easy. I need a doctor. I heard. We'll take you to the hospital after you're booked. For what? We caught that killer. We got a million bucks coming. No, no. I'll tell you what you got. You got the wrong man. He fits the description. I'll tell you what else you got. You got yourself criminal charges and maybe even manslaughter if the man dies. I thought it was him. Well, you thought wrong. A merchant seaman, just off the boat two hours. Well, we were only trying to help. We? I bet you didn't even think of sharing the reward. How many chances have you had to come up with a million bucks? How many? How many times in your life? I'll tell you how many. None. The same as with me. So you give me the smell of that much money. Just the smell of it. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. And it's not just me, either. Every cabbie in this town is looking for that guy. And every bus driver, every pedestrian. Every time a guy's looking out the window, he's looking for that killer. It's not just me. It's everybody. Maybe. But it's you I'm going to put in jail. All right, he's all yours. Book him. Yeah. so much for your cooperation. She says Wilton is washing the windows of her apartment right now. You know, this belongs in the garbage, but if I don't send a car down there, she's going to be calling back all day long. I'm sorry I had to put you on the phones, Eddie, but uh, we needed a calm, experienced head. Oh, I can see it coming all the way from Cincinnati. You're right. Hmm. I'm going to ask you to pull another double shift. We're short of manpower. Half the city is chasing the other half around with guns. I tell you, if we don't find Wilton soon, there won't be enough people around to pay the taxes. Sure, Mike. What the heck? If I can't make the million, at least I can make some overtime. Yellow. Oh, Mike, for you on line three. Homicide Stone. Mike? Dan? The nurse hasn't seen Wilton's mother in over a year. No address. But she did tell me the mother's been working in a home for senior citizens. She gets her calls from an employment agency. Which one? That's a good question. Have you got a good answer? Of course. I'm working on it. Well, keep digging. you to get up, and I want you to put your hands over your head. So shoot, Bob. I said stand up! It's no shoot. I didn't do nothing. You did enough. You know, I'm a fool. You're the one they want on that poster. You're worth $5,000 a pound. There was, uh, another guy. I, he looks just like me. Now, I want you to move real slow. I want you to keep your hands over your head. Now, don't try anything, because I don't want to shoot you. Let's go. Give you a hand with him. Look, keep your eyes front. I'm going to take him up to my booth, and I'm going to call the cops. You're crazy. The cops will jump on the reward. Wait a minute. Well, 
Get over there. Get over there! Cops can't collect rewards. Don't you listen to the radio? Don't be crazy, Pop. They always got a way to fool you. Look, we'll put him in the car and take him to that Dobbs guy. No! No, he belongs to me. Cut it out, will you? There's enough in here for both of us! Oh. Oh. Pop! Oh. Pop! quite a crowd. Anybody see which way he went? Well, if they did, they're not the same. The word is out, Wilton shot the watchman. How did the word get out that fast? Some repairman that works in the neighborhood. He ran down the street telling everybody Wilton killed an old man. The watchman dead? No. He was alive when he left. How long have they been around? It was a tie, me and them. If I managed to get the gate locked in time, they'd probably show here with bloodhounds. Anybody in that posse see which way the repairman went? You want us to ask? No, 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 never mind. They wouldn't cooperate anyway. They become their own homicide department. Only they work for Dobbs and a reward. Defamation of character. It looks like. Now look, Mr. Wilton. Well, maybe you better go call back to the bar and ask. We don't have anything to do with a reward. <laughs> look, yeah, Charlie. It's like a merry-go-round in here. Everybody's That's going for the gold ring. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Charlie, we can't overlook yes, anything. The money is an escrow, Lieutenant. My name is on that reward poster. I made a promise, and I intend to keep it. Do you know what your promise has done to this city? Innocent people are being hurt by other innocent people who are blinded by the fact that they could collect a million dollars. I can't change human nature, Lieutenant. I don't want to see people hurt or be put in jail. All I want is the man that killed my daughter, and I'm willing to pay for it. That's where my responsibility ends. What other people do is their own business. Lieutenant Stone is right, Larry. Call it off. It's gone on far enough. The reward stays. Was there anything else? No. He's not doing this for his daughter. He's doing it for himself. Maybe it's a guilt or vengeance or a twisted idea of justice. I don't know. She's just the excuse he gives himself. Oh, never mind all that. What did you get from the employment agency? Uh, nothing yet. I'm checking with the DMV to see if she owns or drives a motor vehicle. Well, keep checking. I've got to talk to the chief. Seems like Mr. Dobbs there, he... he called them on the phone. More pressure. Oh, sure. Can you hold on a second? Say, Mike, if you're coming back anytime soon. Would you mind bringing me a corned beef on rye, please? Have any luck? Yeah, I got Wilton on the phone right now. Yeah, uh, listen, you're the sixth Wilton to call today. You think you can convince me? you got to help me. There, everybody's trying to, trying to kill me, man. I... Look, I can't see nothing. What about it? The seeing part, I mean. Don't, don't you have glasses? They're broken. How did they get broken? Uh, I broke uh, the, the right the right lens th there. Listen, do you know what's wrong with your eyes? I'm nearsighted. For, uh, 40 over 60. Where are you? We'll send some of our people down to pick you right up. Wait, uh... You, uh, you, what's your name? Clark, Inspector Edmund Clark. Uh... You come. Uh, you, I got you. I'll... Just you. Listen, I can have someone there in a couple of minutes and it'll be all over. Just you, okay? Okay, okay, where are you? Hey, uh, uh, you, the cops can't collect rewards, right? No, they can't. You sure? I'm very sure. Now, where are you? At the Presidio. That bunker up over the bridge. Yeah. Mr. Ma'am, I do like cats, yes. Please understand, we do like kittens and cats and all the rest, but. Not now, lady. I told you a hundred times. It's, we're not doing that today. Tom, Eddie 
Eddie Clark. Yeah, long time no see. Just fine. Look, I'm gonna do you a big favor. You know where Bryant Street headquarters is? Well, meet me outside in five minutes. Listen, you want to split a million bucks or not? That's right. The guy on the poster. Five hundred thousand. Wow. Sure I can do it. I remember now. You were passing the bunker. You just happened to see him and you grabbed him. As far as I'm concerned, I never got the call. Just take him to the newspapers. I love him. No sweat. I can do it. There's nothing to do except pick the guy up and give him a ride. I'll handle it. Don't worry. Wait a minute. What is this? It's just in case. You don't need a gun. The guy's trying to surrender. Well, I heard on television he shot a watchman. He's supposed to be carrying a gun. But I'm I... telling you, you don't need it. You know, I'll just feel better with it. I can't argue with you. I gotta get back. Mike's still with the chief? As far as I know. Anything doing? Tell him that I'm in contact with someone who knows the name of the employment agency. But Wilton's mother is remarried and has a new name. I'll call in as soon as I get him. Anything coming in on the phones? Headaches and crease marks on the seat of my pants. I had to stretch my legs or I'd go stir crazy. <laughs> Better get used to it another year and that's all you'll have to do, that and collect checks. 11 months and four days to be exact. And then sweet retirement. Headhunters out for a reward. Don't make any wrong moves or I'll shoot. What happened to the cop? What's his name? Give me the gun. Sure. Uh, might as well get it over with. A citizen's arrest on the phone, and then tell him to go back to bed. No, no, soon. Yeah, I'll be home soon. Now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry too. What? No, no, don't bother, honey. I'm not very hungry. Okay. Do you want to talk to me? You don't have to, you know. Yeah, Mike, I want to talk. I just came from the hospital. He's dead, isn't he? He died 20 minutes ago. I tried to tell him not to take a gun. He was an old friend, Mike. He and his wife, Betty and Helen and I used to play poker once a month. Till they started having kids. It was the money, Mike. It was so much money. So what happens now? You're through. <laughs> All these years on the force, 
Over 24 of them. I, I get hungry just once. That's all blown. With Wilton still loose, you're the only man I can blame for it. No breaks. Would you give a man a break? I would like to go home for a little while. See Helen. Am I under arrest? You can go home and pull it all together. And then come back down here and turn yourself into the desk. Why me? Why couldn't somebody else have answered that phone? Homicide stone. usually shave and have a cup of coffee before I leave the house in the morning. What have you got? I located the mother's address. She's living under the name of Thompson over in North Beach. Well, why didn't you say so? I could have skipped the shave. I hope you skipped the coffee. I'll survive, but you won't. If you offer me any of that, that carrot juice you drink, God. What's the address? Oh, let's see. It's 8 o'clock. Donnie? You said to get you up at 8 o'clock. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Fix me something to eat, will you? I've got some eggs. How do you want them? Anyway, I'm starving. Is it true? What's that? What they said on TV about the killings? Uh, I think I like those eggs sunny side up. Oh, Donnie, why are you always in trouble? Mom, it's a lie. They got to blame somebody, so they're blaming it on me. Then why don't you go to the police and talk to them? I tried that. I called them. They tried to kill me. I gotta get out of the country. You gotta help me. I don't know how to get you out of the country. You got any money? That's all it takes is money. Maybe thirty dollars. We'll get it. I need your car keys, Sue. I need the car, Donnie, to get to work. I'm asking you to save my life. You're telling me about going to work? Give me keys! Come on. Uh, I gotta get dressed. Well, don't stand there staring at me like I'm some sort of bug. Thompson? I I'm coming. 
I'd like to talk to you for a minute. About what? Oh, I'm sure you know what. My son? He's not here. Oh, oh my God! Uh... to a foot chase of Spalding and Curson. The suspect is Donald Wilton, wanted for murder. spend most of it on lawyers, and if he dies, you might not be around to enjoy it. Well, come on, book him. Crazy people. No, just people. Like Dobb said, human nature. Sometimes it goes sour. When it does, that's when they need us the most. Come on, let's get out of here. Lieutenant, let's let uh, bygones be bygones. No hard feelings, okay? Well, it, it worked out, didn't it? It's over. No. It's not over for a sailor who's in the hospital, or for the people who put him there who might go to jail. There's a watchman on the critical list. Tom Springer is dead, and Ed Clark is through as a cop after, after 24 years of honest service. Can it be over for them? And the man who shot Wilton, who's up for charges, maybe even manslaughter. I didn't tell him to pull the trigger. It was his choice. That's right. It was their greed. You're right. But who baited the hook? Wilton deserves to die. No, he deserves a trial. A trial? That's legal mumbo jumbo. Probably sounds that way until the Jew that's on trial, then it begins to sound pretty good. Look, Mr. Dobbs, if I were you, I'd get the best medical care for Wilton that your money can buy. What are you talking about? If he dies, the DA's gonna charge you with first degree murder. According to the penal code, all I did was commit a misdemeanor. I'll see you in court. I tried to warn you, Larry. Don't warn me, just defend me. You think the DA can make the murder charge stick? Well, to tell you the truth, Daniel, I don't think he knows. But he's gonna try, and we're gonna help.
Streets of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Richard Hatch. With guest stars Eugene Roach, Dabney Coleman, Joseph Hindi, Parker Stevenson. Tonight's episode, The Drop. summer school. You wouldn't want that, would you? Uh-uh. I've got plans for us this summer. Me too. Lunch tomorrow? Yeah, you bet. I'll see you. Just a few more minutes, Mr. Harvard. Where, where will this connect to now? Right to my office. All you have to do is answer it, and that'll give us a direct line for a trace. Lieutenant, um, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the rash of kidnappings of uh, Americans stationed abroad. Well, my company is, and a number of others has adopted a, uh, a working policy how to proceed just in case it happens again. What we've agreed to is no more payments of, of ransom. I don't give a damn about company policy. I want Andy back. Whatever it takes, let them have it all. Oh, please, we can't be sure that money will bring him back. Don't you understand that? But we don't have any choice. All finished, Mike. Thanks, Ernie. Uh, this is my partner, Inspector Robbins. How are you? Did you hear from the hospital? The girl died without regaining consciousness. Tina? She's dead? What do you say now, Andrew? Anything from ballistics? No matchup yet. They're working on it. They also notified the FBI just in case. Mr. Horvath, whether you decide to pay or not is up to the two of you. We'll do everything we can to catch them. But uh, you're going to have to help us. What do you want me to do? Well, whichever way you decide, pretend to play along with their plans. Ask for instructions, stall them along as much as you can. We only need one trace on that phone, just one. You know, if, if I just if I could just be sure they'd keep their word. You can. Insist on proof. Proof? That's right, proof that your son Andy is still alive. Oh, oh. oh I'm sorry, Mrs. Horvath, but I... I think that that's the only way we can protect your son. I understand, Lieutenant. Well, what are the chances you'll catch these people? Chances? Well, I wish I could guarantee it, but uh, I don't know. The uh, kidnappers are usually caught at the drop. That's where they collect the money. And it's usually where we make our only direct contact with them. Uh, Mr. Horvath, we'll keep in constant touch. Thank you very much. Thank you.
about my parents. What about them? Did you call them yet? No, I'll let them stew for a while. You know what they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. What did you have to kill that girl for? That was stupid. What for? You trying to teach me my business, Eddie? Take it easy, Charlie. Eddie didn't mean nothing. Now we got a murder on our necks. Maybe I wanted it that way. Hey, what's your deal? Yeah, I can ice somebody too when the time comes. I can ice somebody too, but there's got to be a reason. Reason? Listen to me. We got a million dollar proposition here, dummy. Now, you listen to me. Your kid gets snatched, huh? You're dealing with a killer. Are you going to be anxious to pay up? Huh? Well, come on, tell me. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you guessed? You guessed my eye. Ah, play gin, dummies. I'm going to get the equipment. I can't understand why they haven't made a contact yet. What are they waiting for? Pain. What? Pain, human misery. The more they inflict, the quicker the people give in. What I don't understand is why they shot that girl when they didn't have to. So they mean business, I guess. Maybe. Just doesn't figure somehow. Hello? Andrew Horvath, Sr.? Yes, speaking. We've got your boy. Where it's them? One million dollars in old bills, unserialized. 400,000 in hundreds, 300,000 in fifties. 200,000 in twenties, 100,000 in tens, in two large suitcases. Now, any attempt to mark the bills or doctor them in any way, and your son's dead. How, um, how do I know he's not dead already? You're not going to get a cent out of me until I'm, I'm sure he's alive. Don't worry, you'll get your proof. Well, that's, uh, that's when you'll get the money there. Those denominations again. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta go now. You'll be hearing from me. Oh, and goodbye, Lieutenant Stone. Curry, did you get it? No trace. Said they must have been calling out of Horbath's district. Which means we may never get a trace. How did he know that you were on the phone tap? Or that homicide was on the case? Maybe that's the reason for the murder. What's that supposed to mean? Come on, let's get this tape to the lab. Check on the kid every half an hour. To hell with Charlie. Shuffle the cards. You play cards.
trying to get away. It's okay. We're gonna make some movies. It's just the prettying up we needed. Only I would have made movies of you two if you gotten away. Dead. Homicide Stone. Lieutenant Stone? Why, yes. Yes, it is. Uh, and may I ask uh, who this is? You know who this is. You got your tape recorder going? That's right. Good, because I want you to follow these instructions very carefully. Harry, put a call for tracer on extension 321. I just dropped a video cassette in the mailbox at the corner of Gordon and 16th. Get it to Horvath. Better hurry. There's a pickup due in 15 minutes. Well, how do you know he has a video playback machine? The same way I know you're trying to trace this call. Get going, Stone. Sorry we couldn't all be in the picture, folks. My associates objected. To tell the truth, they're not very photogenic. First thing is to establish the date. Hold up the newspaper, Sonny. We'll zoom in, just like on TV. Today's date, folks. Service with a smile, proving Junior is still among the living. Though he's collected a few bruises, he was a bad boy. Tried to escape. But this is nothing to what he'll look like if we don't get the money. On time. Tell him, Sonny. Ma? Dad? I'm okay, don't worry. But please give them what they ask. They'll kill me if you don't. I know. Okay, Sonny. You made your point. Anything they want. Anything. Now, pay attention. I'm only going to say this once. I don't want any amateurs gumming up the works. Only one person's going to make the drop. That's Mike Stone. He's a pro. I'm a pro. We understand each other. You hear me, Stone? You'll get your instructions. That's all, folks. <laughs> It's a pro. No, that's not the reason. I don't know, but I get this funny feeling. Like uh, somebody out there wants me dead. OK, why do you think somebody's out to get you? Oh, you ought to be able to figure that out. Why do most kidnappers get caught at the drop? Because the go-between usually picks up some vital clue along the way. Mm -hmm. And latching on the clues is something that I'm supposed to be good at. So why choose me for the job? Because they don't mean for you to come back. You know, I didn't want to say this in front of the Horvath, but I think they intend to kill Andy, too. It was in their plans from the start. That's right, he wasn't blindfolded. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't leave somebody around who could identify them? You keep getting any smarter and I'll be out of the job. Mike, there's no way that you can be the go-between. Well, what about the kid? Look, if they're planning to kill him, they'll do it whoever makes the drop. In fact, some other go-between would have a better chance of coming out alive. We'll see. I'd just like to find out who's got it in for me. Maybe uh, somebody sent up. Well, that narrows it down to a couple of thousand or so. Well, it could be a recent caller. Hey, the lab keeps a file of police interrogation tapes, don't they? Why don't we see if they can find us a match of the voice print? Well, maybe it's not so recent. It sounded to me like he was trying to disguise his voice. Wouldn't that kill the voice print? How do I know? Let's talk to Ernie. He's the expert. for me look you're uh, you're gonna have to give me more time on this now the bank is working on it but it's not that easy to get that amount of money in small denominations you're trying to stall me Harvath no I'm not trying to stall you now swear to you on that it's just that you asked for, for a 
Bill's not in a series. Old Bill's. I'm, I'm just trying to follow instructions. It's almost 5.30. We have to 12 noon tomorrow. 12 on the dot. That should give you plenty of time. I'll do my best. Forget your best. Just do it. Now, wait a minute. I... I still want proof that my... That my son is, uh... Is still alive? I expected that. Okay, here's your baby. Dad? Please help me. Nobody can find this place. That's enough, you punk. No hits. Okay, Horvath, you heard him. Now you cross me and the mailman will deliver his head in a box. Collect! the apartment and the woman surprised you. You didn't mean to kill her. Who are you jiving, Stone? I ain't been nowhere near that pad. I told you. I spent the night with my old lady. Next. There's another patch, Mike. You know, you've been up almost 36 hours now. Why don't you go home and get some rest? Daniel, if I don't find out who's trying to get me, I could be resting for a long, long time. Come on, Eddie. Get that thing threaded, will you? We've only got till noon tomorrow. Tomorrow could be a long day, Mike. Get some sleep, OK? Yeah. Bill, where's Mike? Didn't he come in yet? Yeah, he didn't go home. He's still down in the lab. Didn't get any sleep. And he didn't pick this up, either. It's the 527 tape he wanted to listen to. I'll take it to him. Dad, please help me. Nobody can find this place. No, no hits. Okay, Horvath, you heard him. Now you cross me, and the mailman will deliver his head in a box. Collect. Deliver his head in a box. Collect. Jump to the S file. Get a tape on Springer. Charlie Springer. Mike. I could let somebody else make the drop. You're too exhausted. Well, the robbery detail did most of the work on that one, but I came in somewhere near the end of it. Here it is. Stone Springer. That's it. That's the one. Okay. There we go. Starts at uh, 25 feet. I made my deal with the DA's office, Stone. Armed robbery, period. You got no call to interfere. Only the DA didn't know there was a small homicide involved after you ripped off the warehouse. You're not copying a plea, Springer. You're going up for ten to life. The day will come, Stone. Somebody's going to ship your head back in a box. Collect. Freeze. It's a match. It's a match. Charlie Springer. <laughs> well, looks like Charlie Springer forgot to use his handkerchief that time. Okay, you put on an APB. Get some of the guys to check out his old hangouts. He had an old man. He may still be alive. I'll try to find him. He was a wino. Let's see now. He was living on, um, with some woman. He was living on, um, oh. What street is that? Netter Street, N-E-T-T-E-R. The woman's name was right on the tip of my tongue. I can't think of it at the moment. Um, look, you can dig it out of his files. Go ahead. Charlie Springer. Oh, well, Charlie always was smart, even when he was a little kid. He knew more than his teachers. They couldn't learn him a thing. <laughs> when did you see him last? Last time he hit the bricks. A year ago, maybe two. He got out about 18 months ago. Say, that's right. You know what he brung me? A whole case of red wine. Good stuff, too. 89 cents a bottle. Well, Charlie always was a good boy. It's just the woman turned him the wrong way. What woman? All. The creep called last fall sometime. 
I haven't seen hide nor hair of him since. Did he give you a reason? For what? For not contacting you. Oh, he had some business to take care of. Said he'd be in touch soon. <laughs> Lucky I didn't hold my breath. It's been eight months. Did he say what kind of business? <laughs> not Charlie. Never. Oh, he, uh, hinted around about uh, some big money in the works. But Charlie was always talking about big money. That's all it was, though. Just talk. Oh, he did say something about, uh, trying to, uh, even the score with some guy. Did he mention his name? <laughs> Are you kidding? I went with Charlie for two months before he told me his own name. There we are. Can't see a thing. A work of art. Well, now, maybe he's finally gonna have to get rid of that old suit. <laughs> well, I've got a beeper on me, one planted in the car, and there's one in each of the valises. Right. What can go wrong? Don't tell me. A lot. For one thing, he's had 18 months to plan this caper. And according to the San Quentin psychiatrist, and you listen to this, Springer is a psychoneurotic bordering on megalomania with pronounced homicidal tendencies. Michael, say it again. Making yourself a target isn't going to help Andy. Don't worry. One thing I've taken special pains to avoid all my life is getting killed. Well, I'm going to have you and half the force tailing me. Stone. I know you got the money, so let's get to it. It's 12.30. At 2 o'clock sharp, you'll be in the phone booth at the corner of Stevenson and Pine. It's a gas station. I want you in an unmarked car ready for the drop. No police radio, no phone, no CB, and you come unarmed. You got it? Yeah. I see one car tailing you, spot one chopper in the sky, and the kid goes. Wait a minute now. I can't control every helicopter. Where you're going, you can. Oh, and another thing. Between now and 2 o'clock, keep your uh, colleagues away from the money. I just don't trust cops, you know what I mean, Stone? <laughs> just don't trust them. Well, the merry-go-round starts at 2 o'clock. set to go. You've got 40 minutes. You all right? I just thought of something. Come on, let's get to the lab. Ernie, do your sleeping at home. Home? Right. Do you have Springer's last tape? Uh, I, I was, uh, I was just listening to it. I want to hear it. The part before Andy got on the phone. What are we looking for? Listen. Just that you ask for, for bills not in a series, old bills. I'm, I'm just trying to follow instructions. It's almost 5.30. You have till 12 noon tomorrow. 12 on the dot. Hold it. Did you hear that? A siren? Dan, give it a rewind. Okay. All right, now start it. Follow instructions. It's almost 5.30. You have till 12 noon tomorrow. 12 on the dot. A train. That's right. A train. Now, that tape was activated at... at... What time does that say? 5.27. 5.27 p.m. I want you to check the footage. I want to know exactly what time that horn sounded. 5.28 in 10 seconds. Now, the next question. Comparing the decibel range of Springer's voice... And this diesel horn. Can you give me any idea how far away that train might be? Now, let's assume that he phoned from a phone booth. Well, it all depends. Because if the phone booth was open, it could be as much as five miles. Five mile radius. Yeah. That means we'd have to comb an area of, uh, 
over 80 square miles. Ah, but on the other hand, if it was closed, it could be within the radius of only one mile. My engineers usually blow their horn at grade crossings. Right? Right. Right. I want you to check the railroads. I want to know what train hit what crossing at precisely... What was that time again? 5.28 and 10 seconds. At that time. Oh, 1.35, I gotta go. You tell Tanner that he's in charge of all the cars that are gonna tail me. And then I want you to find that crossing, go to the phone company, get a map, locate all the phone booths within the area of that crossing. I've just got a hunch. Just a hunch that Springer's gonna jerk me around like a yo-yo. Well, we'll see. Now you know what to do. Good. Mike, be careful, huh? What'd you say? Be careful. You be careful. I don't want a unit within three blocks of me. Once they fan out, you shouldn't have any trouble keeping tabs on me. And uh, Dan will catch up with you as soon as he can. Okay. Okay. Now move him out. Come on, move him out. train is every minute of the day. I'm only interested in one. Mm -hmm. Yesterday afternoon, 5.28 p.m. And 10 seconds. And 10 seconds, right. Just a second, look at the schedule. Ah, uh, yes, here she is. Uh, right at the terminal at 6.10 p.m., three minutes early, number 106 from Eureka, which means that at 5.28.10, she'd be right about here. Kogan's Point Crossings. 25 miles north of our main depot. Any other possibilities? Nope. Nothing fitting that time pattern. Great, that's great. Thank you very much. Stone. Okay, Stone, proceed to Dory's 21 Club at Mission and Stewart. Wait for my phone call. Don't try anything. You're being watched. Yeah, Mission and Stewart. Mission and Stewart. <laughs> Vectors 8-5 to all units. Location Pine and Elwood. Frequency 1. I'm getting a weak signal. 28 on the decibel scale. Strongest signals report in. Over. 14 12 to 85. Receiving strong 65 decibels. Corner of Clay and Sutter. 10 4. Attention all units. Proceed north in direction of Clay and Sutter.
Sutter, going north. I'll find you. Keep hassling me around like that, and you're gonna louse it up. Not me, but you're gonna louse it up. I could have a flat tire or something. That'd be too bad for our young friend, wouldn't it now? Just follow my instructions, Stone. Proceed north on Route 34 to the Old Mill Road. Take it exactly 14.3 miles. Check your odometer. All right, then what? You'll find out what. Just be there at 4.30 sharp. And I mean sharp. Or you'll be sticking a gun in that kid's ear. No, wait a minute. That only gives me a half hour. I don't... I... I... I listen, I can't make it that fast. <laughs> signal like that. Maybe he switched direction. Well, we wouldn't have lost it that fast. Something must have happened to his car. Well, the beeper on mic is still working. 8-5 to all units. Change to frequency 2 and maintain due north direction. Dan, are you picking him up? Yeah, frequency 2 is coming in fine, but something's gone wrong, that's for sure. You still on Route 34? Yeah, but I don't like the way this is going down. I'm right behind you, about a quarter of a mile. Are you all right, mister? Yeah, I'm okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, you gotta be crazy pulling a stunt like that. I could have killed you. Where, where are you going? Here. Police. Police? Yeah. Well, what about my truck? Wait a minute. We'll take care of it. Get out of the car. What's the matter? This is the police emergency. Police? Yes. Emergency? How do I know you're the police? What are you doing? Just get out, please, miss. Get out? I don't want to get out. Come on, lady, What please. are you doing? I have a dental appointment. Are you crazy Take cab, or something? You Take a cab. For it. I don't want a cab. I got to get my teeth fixed. It's a crazy man. Sir, he took my car. Listen, I want to talk to you guys. Hey, Dan. Yeah? Mike's signal's getting weaker. 
Somebody's got to pay for damages. Look what he did. Look, this is an emergency. We'll get back to you later. Do you know which way he went? He turned on to the old mill road. Thank you very much. Wilson, take my car. Let's go move it out. Wait a minute. What do I tell my husband? Surprise, Lieutenant? Not particularly. We had you made right from the beginning. Sure you did. I got regards from your old man. He wants to thank you for that case of wine you sent him, that red wine, when you got out of the slammer. And then Verna sends a message, too, but I don't think you want to hear that one. <laughs> Friskin. Us to strip you all the way down. The signal's gone dead. Switch to frequency three. Because we can't, you moron. Why not? Because I said so. Get in and drive. Switch to frequency three. Repeat frequency three. Stand by for further instructions and keep your distances. We can't have a parade of cars on this road. Too easy to spot. We don't want to force Springer into any quick moves. Well, you think Mike caught up with them already? Or vice versa. Well, it's a good thing we've got bugs in those suitcases, because they're not about to part with that money. Well, we better not lose them now. We're down to our last contact. Sounds like we're right on top of them. They must have pulled off the road. Pull over. Do I know my business? Eh? Oh, boy, Charlie. That's a lot of money. 
You know they're gonna kill you too. Why do you say that? Because you're not blindfolded either. I know what you've been through. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing anyone can do. Well, Charlie, you got it all figured out? I figured you ran one on me. You got a lucky shot in the dark. No. Voice prints. You blew it just once. You forgot to muffle your voice. So what? I say we scrag them both right now. Charlie, I don't see how you got tied up with a couple of lame brains like them. Knowing you, I wouldn't have come here without a lot of backup. Well, we took care of your backup. Maybe. But you could be wrong, you know. Charlie knows that a couple of live hostages are better than a dozen dead ones. Charlie, I, I'm surprised at you. I really am. <laughs> you know, I just can't believe that a guy like you, a smart guy like you, can, is going to split all that loot with a couple of idiots. All right, waste them both. All right. Wait a minute. Willis! Start sorting out the money. We'll split the money now, and then we'll waste them later. Don't make me start wondering about you now, Charlie. All right. You bought yourself a few more minutes. a half a mile ahead. Just keep going north. It's 5.30. Keep moving. Hang a left. This could be it. This is the first crossroad south of the point. This is 8-5. Attention all units. Mike, Mike, 
Are you all right? For Pete's sake, we lost you. All three beepers went dead. We didn't know where you were. Excuses. Nothing but excuses. You did all right, Daniel. Get these off of me, will you? Lieutenant, I, uh, I really don't know what to say. We, we owe you everything, I guess. Uh, the ransom, you know, I was, I was perfectly willing to pay the ransom. You're, you're welcome to that. I mean, every cent of it. I have a feeling you're trying to get off pretty cheap. I want something much more precious. What's that? A bed. <laughs> oh, Lieutenant, you can have the best room in the house if you want it. No, I, I've got my own bed, thank you. <laughs> Lieutenant, you're going to be all right? I will now, thank you. Okay, okay. Thank right. you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say, uh, you mind driving? I don't think I can make it. Uh, neither could I. Sorry. Ooh. You get behind the wheel. And when you drop me off, you can go back to the office and fill out a full report on Springer. I want it on my desk first thing in the morning. You hear me? First thing in the morning. You really want it by morning?